hear Katie talk about Baldur's Gate 3. Sorry. <laughs> oh my god, there actually are people that want to hear me talk about no, Baldur's they really Gate 3. I keep getting asked. It, it was glorious, everybody. Katie oh. started Baldur's Gate 3 and she told us about it for about a few minutes and then the recording fucked up, so we had to restart. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I'll give a very short summary. Uh, I love Baldur's Gate, but it's super fucking long. And I just don't have the time. So we're going to put it on the back burner till after Dragon Age comes out. Um, And I know a lot of people going, oh, God, Katie, you're never going to play it. (laughs) Maybe because there's a lot of things I said that about. And I still haven't finished like a lot of RPGs I mean to come back to. Uh, Cyberpunk being one of them. There's Greedfall. There's (laughs) Greedfall you're good on, man. I didn't finish (laughs) Greedfall either. And I got to tell you, I'm a glutton for punishment. But like... (laughs) You know. Okay, maybe that's why I never hear about that game because it, it was like all I heard about it for a little bit. I'm like, oh, maybe I'll try it, and then like I started it and was like, okay, this isn't clicking for me. Maybe I'll try it later, and then it's been like, I, I'm that person who like I'm big on spiders, right? Like, I mean, there was a whole section there where people when I was actually making videos when I was all mm-hmm. big on Technomancer and all mm-hmm. that different stuff. I was real big, and I still am a fan of that studio. I haven't played their Steel Rising game, but you know, maybe that one's cool, but. The second half of Greedfall just became a slog with like trash mobs, and I felt like the story didn't go anywhere. Yeah, you're good on Greedfall. I don't think you need to go back to that one. That's fair. I do need to go back to Cyberpunk, though. Like, I everyone I know is like, "Oh, it's so good now." I'm like, "Okay, I'll go back to it." And uh, well, after Baldur's Gate, which is going to be after uh, Final Fantasy, which is also after Dragon Age. Oh, Jesus! <laughs> like, it's mm-hmm. going to be a minute. We got a lot of stuff to get to. Um, but there is uh, what? What is it going to be? The term that you used is Dragon Age Summer. Oh, Dragon Age Summer, baby! Yeah, let's go. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, I, I think we talked about this probably last episode. I'll be honest, I don't remember what we talked about last episode, and I, I looked it up today. Um, but uh, yeah, so they're saying that they're going to reveal something this summer or talk about it this summer. We don't really know. So everyone's to- coined the phrase Dragon Age Summer. Um, not Hot Girl Summer, Dragon Age Summer. Get get your get your clown makeup on, whatever you do to dress up like Dragon Age. And uh, we bought- Dad Summer? Dad summer, daddy summer. (laughs) Oh, this community. They never (laughs) fail to impress. Hey, Uh, you're the one that came up with dad summer. I'm I'm helping. You know, I'm here when I'm here. I'm like that uncle that comes in very infrequently, but he's very cool when you see him. Um, So Dragon Age summer is stemming from the fact that at some point last year, they said more information will be coming summer 2024. Mm-hmm. Plus the rumors from like Jeff Grubb. And I think there was another guy whose name I can't remember saying that the release date is this year sometime. Who knows if that's true. Uh, from my like knowledge, Jeff Grubb apparently knows shit. So a lot of people are believing what he says. Um, so I'm hoping that's the case. Yeah, Jeff Grubb is Steph Curry. Uh, for a basketball reference that most of our audience probably won't care about, Jeff Grubb is Steph Curry. He's incredibly accurate, and he hits from deep. The man is hitting logo threes. Caitlin Clark, uh, mm-hmm. if you prefer. Um, he's very good at making predictions. So if he's saying that, it's probably a thing. Mm-hmm. But also, everybody, it feels like this is the thing. It feels like this is the time. Um, at least that's what people... I get the sense or feeling, but you raised kind of a good question when we, when the recording failed before, what God if it slips? Yes. What if it slips? What if it doesn't happen? I, um, it was more like a joke though. Cause like, I can't imagine it's been so long, but more just like, what, what, what's the fan reaction? Cause I, I feel like we've just accepted, accepted it. We've accepted into our souls that this game is, is a dream and a wish. Yeah, it's a it's a long it's a long wished for dream, a long dreamed for wish. <laughs> I want to say it. Uh, no, I know. I I think it. Yeah, it's more of a joke statement slash question, which could be funny depending on your sense of humor. I just think <laughs> if it legitimately, if it did, I think we would be fine. I think the the community, hopefully, I know I personally would feel like we have waited for this game long enough. If we wait a little bit longer, I don't think that's gonna be like a high amount of disappointment at this point. I think we're just used to it and we know it's coming, I guess, the, when it's ready. Yeah. That's, 
I, I've seen both sides. I've seen some people like, buy where you got one more chance. If it's not this year, I'm like, I get it. I get it. I do. Um, at the same time, I think that if you're still constantly like if if maybe like once a week or even a month, you think, man, I wish I want the next Dragon Gage. They already got you, baby girl. You wait another year. It doesn't matter. You'd still buy it. I know yeah. you. I see into your soul. You can be upset. You can cry. <laughs> you can beg. 2027, when Dragon Age 4 comes out, you'd be first in line. I know. I'm one of them. <laughs> <laughs> 20, you know, 2034, 10 year anniversary, 20 year anniversary. <laughs> years. Oh my God. Yeah. Next to the, yeah, the, uh, the, uh, you know, all the, all that eclipse stuff and the uh, emergent compendium with, with Solus. They don't mean about this eclipse. I mean, the one in 20 years from now in 2034. <laughs> oh man, that fucking eclipse. We don't want to sidebar on that. That eclipse. <laughs> God damn it. The fucking thing. See, I was having a great time. Me and my family took a trip to Missouri. We were in the middle of goddamn nowhere, Missouri, in like this park that we thought was obscure and no one would be there. And there was like probably 50 people there. We had a great time. Kiddo played with some other little kids. It, meanwhile, you, you, in the, you... In the path. Like in the path. They kept showing the path. Everything mm-hmm. was about the fucking path. And here's the path and all the maps. And here it is. And it just happened to be the part of Texas that I was in. Everyone was like, great. Like literally my apartment. Like I didn't, ha- not only did I not have to travel, I didn't have to fucking drive. Like my fucking, where I live was going to be in the center of the fucking, this glorious path. Mm-hmm. And then it was just cloudy as fuck all day. <laughs> like the <laughs> thickest fucking clouds <laughs> that you have ever seen in your entire life. Um, they parted for a glorious nine seconds, if I could say anything. And that honestly, mm-hmm. people like practically started cheering uh, when the clouds did part for those several seconds, but during the totality, or? during the totality, okay. So uh, did did you get to see it then? The, the I did, in fact, see it, um, but it was like very underwhelming for people who you know were hoping to get more mm-hmm. visibility of it. Yeah, no, I I I love eclipses. We went to go see the twenty seventeen one. Which uh, uh, fun facts in preparation for this episode, um, I listened to. So we're going to be talking about our once for Dragon Age four. And uh, that was our very first episode. We talked about that. And I'm talking about my trip to the eclipse in 2017. No way. <laughs> I, yeah, I was like, ooh, weird. <laughs> ooh, weird. Ooh, I, yeah, uh, weird. <laughs> so it's uh, time, time, time is a loop. Um, That's but, a great uh, segue back into why yeah. Dragon Age is definitely coming out this year. It's meant yeah, to be, the, folks. It's meant to be. It's another eclipse year. It's, it's the year of the dragon. That's a thing, apparently. And Hell then there's yeah. an eclipse that just happened in April. So surely this is something, right? Anyway, but um, I'm just going to move into the topic today. Once for Dragon Age 4, uh, we had this whole bit where I talked about I want Dragon Age 4 to be shorter. Um, and then the uh, the, uh, recording the recording messed up. Yeah. yeah, so I, this is very short on that. Like, I am so... I, I like Baldur's Gate. I want to play more at Baldur's Gate, but I'm so overwhelmed with how big that is. And because I just look at like the quests list and like, because I accept every quest because so, I'm a doormat for video games. Um, and it's just so much. I get overwhelmed and I don't have a, like a ton of time to game. And like, I want to get to the good parts and I get really impatient and then it's whatever and blah, blah, blah. So I, I would enjoy a Dragon Age that's not 200 hours. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, what I like, I mean, what I think Inquisition's Inquisition is like padded to hell and back. So if you're really just doing the story, you can get it in like, I think, 60 hours. Um, if you do everything, I think it's like 100 or something. Um, and then, and, like, and 60 being a low mark is insane when like huge mm-hmm. games, games were considered huge if they were 40 hour RPGs 10, 15 years ago. Mm-hmm. And honestly, I think that's a good a good mark. That's a good amount of, of game time for me. You know, like I don't need two hundred hours in my life. Like I look, I I'm I'm playing Final Fantasy fourteen right now, and that's put at a huge hour mark. And like I I do love it; it's really fun. But like I have been basically playing no other game for well over a year now. I want something else in my life. <laughs> yeah, I just I think that's <clears throat> games are. They are, in a way, getting too long. Um, Mm -hmm. It's weird that we have that measurement or that sense for other media. No matter how good a movie is, there's a sense of like, damn, this movie's too long. It would have been better Mm -hmm. if it was shorter. 
even books that you're not supposed to consume in one, you know, a movie you consume in one sitting, but even books, it's like, this is a great book, but man, 850 pages, they're really pushing it kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. Um, But for games, it's like the gamers are going, there's no such thing as too big, or maybe they are now. I don't know. I, I kind of, cause I, I do feel like people are going, um, there is such thing as too good of graphics. Cause sometimes these graphic requirements are just fucking nuts, dude. Um, oh, there's that, yeah. Yeah. But like also like to length of time, I think a lot of us are getting older. We got more shit to do. We got kids, we got families, we got dogs that just want to go potty, you know? So <laughs> we, we have things we want to go do. Um, so and, and like, I, I, I like playing games, but I wouldn't play more than one game a year sometimes, you know, maybe, maybe I'll do two and get spicy, you know? <laughs> sure. Sure. I, it also too, I mean, again, those other two mediums that I mentioned, books and movies, the price point is very different. You know, a book That's doesn't true. cost you $70. Um, now, a movie's getting up there though. A, a night out at a movie theater <laughs> yeah. with people with like a family. Yes, yeah. it is. But I like a single ticket at least is not. Mm near there so i guess people feel from that standpoint that games need to have more length but i agree with you i think a 40 hour rpg um which is about what mass effect mass effect 2 mass effect 3 are Mm -hmm. i I think that's a great length well it's also like i'm sure you would completely agree with this but it's also like the price okay yeah a a game is 70 dollars, but how much of your time are you spending with that and what does that equal out to the dollar versus like it's I haven't been to the movies in a while. Let's say it's like $15 for a ticket for like two hours. Like that's way more expensive than the 40 hour video game at 70, I think. Mm, Okay. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess that's how I think of it. Um, Now there are some games like final fantasy uh, 14 where there's a subscription and then the price point just is stupid. Like you're (laughs) right. Right. (laughs) And I I have, that's, I I have nothing to say there, but Baldur's gate, you know, it's a one time, $70 $70 price and then you get 200 plus hours of game time. Right. That's nuts. It's That's insane. It's a great value. And I know uh, to, to speak up for the people who I'm sure will be listening to this that are, so let's say play devil's advocate for those folks. There are going to mm-hmm. be, there's going to be someone in the comments who says to you and I, you know, don't say that the game should be shorter. It should be 200 hours. You guys just don't need to play all of it. Kind of a thing, right? You can skip mm-hmm. all this. What do you say to those people who are who are saying that we shouldn't say that? I mean, that's that, that's fair. I think there is like there is a way to say or not a way to say, but there there is a room to say like, well, Katie, this just isn't a game for you. And yeah, maybe that's true. Maybe it just isn't. It's like a, a, a not Death Souls, uh, Dark Souls. Um, it looks interesting. I like some of the art style, but like I, I can't. I'm not good that good at games i'm gonna fucking suck and and get enraged that's just not a game for me i I don't i don't play it um but i don't know i guess maybe this is just my hope that i dragon age has in the past been a a length of time that i felt appropriate and so i just hope they continue on with that you know what i mean like if it if like the i think the original boulders gates were on the longer side but like for the like (sighs) How how long is the original Boulder's Gate? Thirty hours. I mean, that's yeah. Mm-hmm. They're they're nowhere near the length that games are now. A, a BG one veteran probably could mm-hmm. beat that thing in eight hours. So I guess I just but like how long were were games of that era though? Is that was that considered long in that era? That's a good question. I mean, it came out in ninety six, ninety seven, something like that, mm-hmm. and um, I, I didn't I didn't play it. At that time, I would have been quite young to play it at that time. So I'm not sure. I I would imagine so. Because I, for me, around the time when I started playing RPGs was Knights of the Old Republic, Fable, Mm -hmm. kind of like early 2000s era. Mm -hmm. And I felt like at that point when they said 40 hours, 40 hour RPG, that for a long time was like the gold standard. That means it's a long, a good long game. Yeah. And it felt that way up through the early 2010s and until eventually it was like, well, this is a 50 hour RPG. This is 60 hours. And then suddenly everything less than a hundred hours was like <laughs> this paltry. It wasn't <laughs> worth your money. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know. See, like, yeah, I guess my, my, you, you asked me, like, what do I say to those people that are like, well, I do want those things. I got nothing to say. I think it, I just want them to be smaller. <laughs> That's all I got. 
Yeah. I, I, I have a different me, opinion, man. Yeah, to me, I say I hear what they're saying. But if we look at the best example that we can think of, which in my opinion is Dragon Age Inquisition, the last Dragon Age game. To this day, if you go watch a streamer, well, there's not as many people streaming it, but if you go watch a Let's Play, if you go watch, they all say the same thing. Hey, everybody, leave the hinterlands as quick as you can. Yeah. The, yeah. The, I'm pretty sure the developers have said you know, things oh, exactly. like that. And so maybe it works for Skyrim to be 100 hours. Maybe it works for other games to be, maybe even Baldur's Gate 3, which is tonally, stylistically, I guess, vaguely similar to Dragon Age. But for the last Dragon Age game we had, it seemed like it was getting too big. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Because uh, so I, I don't be think... I don't think with the test type of game Dragon Age is that an open world was really that. Now, I, I feel like Bioware was pushed into making an open world game because um, they came off the heels of Skyrim, or at least mm-hmm. the development. Um, and so that's kind of why Skyrim fucked shit up, dude. It like yeah, it was a Titanic <laughs> game. It changed it was, the landscape yes. of gaming. I think in some ways, Baldur's Gate 3 might end up doing the same thing, to be honest. Which, depending on how that goes, I would be for. Because if that means we get more like CRPG like games, I would be very happy. However, if if companies just take away, we need giant fucking games that are two hundred hours. I'm going to cry. <laughs> um, all right, let's let's uh, unless you have something else to add, let's move on. Uh, uh, yeah, no, we want it to be smaller. Um, what else? So, um, real quick, so I listened to the very first episode that we had of like what were some of our wants for Dragon Age Four, and in it, I put together a list I found on Reddit of what are people's wants for Dragon Age 4. Um, and I listened back to those and I pulled together, how many is this, like eight or something? Um, little tidbits. And I just want to like talk about them and see what we think about them. Um, so this is what we wanted out of Dragon Age 4 circa, what, 2016, I think? Because it was after uh, Andromeda was released because we're talking about Andromeda being a game. 2017 then yes um so the, the first thing that we wanted back for dragon age is trevor morris Oops. oh that makes sense well yeah it, i love him back however it has been determined that he is not coming back and now we get um uh i forget his name now it's um a guy that works with uh it's in on yes no, 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 no. Um, Hans Zimmer. Hans Zimmer creates has. This, oh, it's like, Hans Zimmer. Well, sort of. So Hans Hans Zimmer has a company where he has a bunch of like um, underling musical composers um, okay. to hire out essentially, and they contacted one of them, and I think the the guy who's actually doing it, even though Hans Zimmer's name on it, maybe he checks it off. I don't know, but it's a guy named Lorne Balf. Um, he's done some other games before. I cannot tell you what they are at the top of my head because I haven't looked it up for a bit. So it's just some guy we haven't seen. Me, at least I haven't seen. If you know the name, great. Um, so hopefully he does well. But uh, Trevor Morris did. We we only know this because Trevor Morris tweeted out a sarcastic tweet about it. Like, nah. Uh, someone said like, oh, I hope you you uh, scored Dragon Age Four. He's like, nah. They they got one of Zimmer's guys. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> I oh, they're deleted musicians, it. you know. Yeah, I don't know. Like, hey, I love Trevor Morris, so I, 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 I do wish he was back. I just hope the new guy's good. Uh, which, how do we know the new guy? Uh, the vinyl record came out and it had I, his name on it. Anyway. Yeah, I mean, I, I love Hans Zimmer. I think Hans Zimmer should be considered one of the great composers ever. But I have no idea what I should expect from, as Trevor Morris puts it, one of Hans Zimmer's guys. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm not quite sure about that um another thing we pulled up is uh we oh i forget what the exact thing we wanted was but we were excited about um uh alexis kennedy joining the team for a little bit which well, aged like that milk. <laughs> that only worked out so well yeah so that's i'm sure whatever he wrote is fucking gone dude <laughs> like, I'm, I'm sure <laughs> Um, I think at the time there were rumors that he would do something with the, we were talking maybe Cal Chirac or maybe uh, mm-hmm. the uh, necromancers, uh, the uh, uh, mortalitasi in, uh, in Navarra. Um, I'm sure whatever he wrote is just gone. I'm sure they purged it. Um, wh- what did Alexis Kennedy do? I'll be honest. I don't remember as much to really talk about it. So go look it up. Uh <laughs> I think we even talked about it at one point on the podcast. I just don't know, remember what episode it was. Yeah, I, I don't either. 2017 was a long time ago. Sorry it for bringing was. everybody down, folks. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, there was another one where uh, we uh, it, we wanted uh, the Kune to go to war with Thetis, which, hey, that happens. That's happening. Look at us. We got one. Woohoo! Woo! <laughs> we, were, we, yeah, we were talking about, yeah, we want to see Sten fuck shit up and do whatever. And uh, yeah, that's still possible. Uh, and I'm excited to see that happen. Um, uh, one that kind of made me sad. We were really excited about the new comics with Veya and see where how that would lead into Dragon Age 4. Maybe it still does, but they wrapped it up so nicely in the comics. I am like now wondering if that just is not like maybe we get a codex entry and maybe a cameo. But I, I just don't think that's going to be as big a part of the plot as uh, I hope it would be. Which I can see why people would be disappointed with that. But at the same time, it's a double-edged sword because it's nice when media, like they do something in comics comics, and it's contained in comics. That's nice. Yeah. But also people like when the thing is sort of quote unquote elevated into the mainstream games. Yeah. And I, I really hope we could get some part of it in there because like I want to see those characters again and like Fenris is in there now. So I want to see Fenris again. So... Yeah, and especially since his voice actor is pretty like has a big range. What is his What is his name? Fenris's voice actor. Oh, I can oh, see heck, his I'm face. Spacing. Yeah, no, he, he. But he's in every single Dragon Age game as like like he's Samson. He was Gatsy. He's various NPCs in Dragon Age Origins. He's Fenris. He's all sorts of people. Uh, I feel like every game I play, he's in. So he's yeah. uh, uh, the illustrious prolific. Gideon Emery. There it is. Thank you. So I'm sure he's going to play some NPC in Dragon Age 4. So why not have Fenris? I could have said as Dragon Age Inquisition as well. But um, which to be fair, I believe that about Dragon Age Inquisition as well. Um, so, yeah. Uh, another thing we wanted is flying griffins still on the possibility table. Uh, now, in particular, though, you were talking about hoping that flying on griffins feels a lot like how Anthem flies. Uh, and at the time, Anthem was not out yet. So now that Anthem is come and gone, basically, how do you feel about that statement if we were to fly around like an Anthem? Because I think we both like the flying mechanic, if I remember correctly. Uh, I th- I think the flying in Anthem was good for the time. Yeah, I, mm-hmm. I absolutely do feel that way. So it would need to be modulated a little bit because mm-hmm. powerful exosuit shouldn't handle exactly like Griffin. But yeah. I think the technology ought to be there and and it'll be in place. So yeah, I I guess I stand by that statement. I would like for them to use some of what they learned in frostbite for flying an Anthem to potentially be there for uh, some Griffin action in uh, Dragon Age Dreadwolf. Yeah. I, I'm having now played final fantasy and like, you you know you ride on mounts everywhere i've kind of gone against mounts because i just want to be where i want to go i don't want to have to fly there <laughs> i don't have to want to deal with that oh <laughs> uh, yeah that, i mean there is something to that as well also i don't know how they're gonna it, it is a presumably dragon age red wolf will be a party based game like the other dragon age games and mm-hmm. i think it is still weird in inquisition when you um ride the mount everybody just kind of oh that's a away. good point yeah unless the griffins Hmm. At least in Last Flight, I think you could fit two people a griffin. So you would at least need two griffins. But that's still like a lot. Hmm. Hmm. It is. I mean, yeah, you would. Yeah, you need two griffins. And then also, you know, who's going on? You know, who's going on the back? I don't know. It's so interesting. Mm-hmm. So, OK. Um, other things that we talked about wanting. Uh, we said we wanted um, to see Zevran taking down the crows. Uh, Now, funny enough, we are seeing the crows being taken down, but they're being taken down by the Kunari. So I feel like unless Zevran's suddenly working with the Kunari, which let's be real, he's he's not doing that. um, I don't know what that's about or if we're going to see Zevran at all. I feel like I just get the sense. I have nothing to base this on. I just get the sense that they're going to slowly pull away from any references to Dragon Age Origin because it's been a long time since. Like, it's... I I think... Okay. Dragon Age Origins in, in lore starts at around 9.30 Dragon. Mm-hmm. I am putting money down that Dragon Age Dreadwolf starts around 9.55 or so. It's been 25 years since Dragon Age Origins happened right. when Dragon Age... Uh, Dreadwolf begins. Uh, 
I, I feel like no one's going to care about what happened to North. Like Zevran, maybe he already took down the crows or House Air and I, and then he just went and retired with you, Warden. I think that's what they're going to do, and we're really not going to see Zevran. Now, I, I want him to be there. That would be great. But I, I just feel like we're not going to see that. I don't know. I agree with that. I mean, I, number one, I think you're making a sensible and logical statement about the distancing from Dragon Age Origins. Um, given the time, given the way that just feels like the franchise has moved on since then, I think mm-hmm. that's a very logical and sensible prognostication. It- also, I have a sense, and I have no basis for this, that if it's been 25 years in the time jump since then, if Zevran is canonically alive... Over the course of 25 years, that means he has fucked 2,500 people, probably. (laughs) So one of those jilted lovers is surely to have often by now. Um, I I, Except if he is romanced by the warden. Oh, uh, that's true. Either he is with the warden or if the warden dies, it is canonical that he swears off love. Well, he swears off love. No, 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 no. He said, you know, the, the ending slide says he never took another lover. Uh, look, if anybody's going to cuck the warden, it's Zevran. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, no, okay. Number one, that is not true. It's Isabella. <laughs> it is okay, Isabella by true. a while. Isabella is the only non, un, non, un, uh, why can I not say this word? Monogamous right. lover. She she's she's like, hey, I love you. It's great, but I see multiple people, and your hawk's just like two thumbs up. <laughs> uh, so you know, I mean, Zevran, and you said Zevran working with the Kuhn would never happen. Maybe they would. Maybe it would happen if they promised that he could fuck everybody in the Kuhn. <laughs> that would maybe get him on board. Uh, no. But, <laughs> No, this is Zevran slander. I want. I know. <laughs> That's what I'm here for, baby. <laughs> uh, but no, yeah, I I agree. Origins, as much as we love it, it's it's the beautiful, amazing sort of. It has to be its own contained thing. You can't continue to carry that on as a franchise for much longer. Well, it, it just from like a fan standpoint, everyone who's already played Origins is good. We want to see more of it, I'm sure. The problem is, unless you play PC, it is really hard to play Origins now on, on oh. console. Because yeah. it, it has not been ported to whatever. It's like maybe like if you are a newer fan to Dragon Age and you like... It, yeah, if if you're like maybe even in your twenties now, and you're like, okay, I want to get in this Dragon Age thing, um, but you know, I don't have a, a nice PC to play this on, which I would argue that like most shitty PCs would be able to play Origins, <laughs> but um, oh yeah, uh, like y- y- you would have to track down a console that could play it, and then track down an old copy of the game, which is kind of already hard to find, like unless you buy it off eBay, I suppose. But um, and then like it's, it's kind of hard to get some of the DLC and the servers are wonky, especially on Xbox. Um, so like it's it's probably within the next five to ten years. If you want to play Origins, if you're not playing on PC, you're just kind of fucked. Yeah, and you know, I mean, we've talked about this before. I don't want to turn this into the to the Dragon Age Legendary Edition wish list, but yeah. we've talked about that before, right? It's like it now more than ever they could use a quote unquote Dragon Age Legendary Edition, a la the Mass Effect Legendary Edition mm-hmm. that they did. Yes, I still want that, like a properly done version of that. But when you said the comment about like most shitty PCs should be able to run Dragon Age Origins, like at this point, I bet my fucking phone could run Dragon Age Origins. And not for nothing, but um Aspire Media or Aspire Studios or whatever their name was they're not busy anymore because uh, they got kicked off of the KOTOR remake. <laughs> I heard about and, that. And the only reason why they were like beloved for a second is they were doing a halfway, halfway competent job with porting KOTOR onto phones, KOTOR mm-hmm. 2. And then when they started getting it onto Switch, they kind of started fucking it up a bit. But control-wise... Dragon Age Origins actually isn't that much different than KOTOR if you needed to move that onto a phone interface. It's not great, but KOTOR is workable on a phone. You just reminded me that I do not know if it would work. Hold on a real sec. I have to look up a thing I posted on Discord. Uh, 
Okay, long story short, Apple allowed an emulator on the iOS store. Um, and it has like a f- big list of things it can emulate. Could it do... Okay, uh, supported game systems, NES, Super NES, 64, Game Boys, and plenty more to come. You, okay, you might be able... If if they do like an Xbox 360 or a, a PlayStation uh, 3, I think was was origin, we might actually be able to emulate Dragon Age. on. Wow, well, I mean, if that's the case, that would be even easier because then you wouldn't even have to worry about controls because mm-hmm. iOS recognizes... Uh, game pads like controllers so yeah it, yeah it says controller supports like switch pro ps4 ps5 xbox bluetooth wired key wow yeah um which i everyone anyone who has an android's like bitch i can already do that i get that but <laughs> um, if you're not tech savvy that might be hard to do uh so yeah okay so yeah maybe maybe the maybe the time is coming where you could just emulate it on Maybe even legally, who knows, on, on your on your phone or iPad device, whatever the fuck. That's that's an amazing piece of information. I didn't know that. And for, from, for some reason, we were able to transition all the way from Zevran's going to cuck the warden to this, which is an outstanding uh, podcasting skills here on our part. There you go. Uh, also, the uh, the app is called Delta. I download it, but I, I uh, don't have anything to put on it right now. Uh, that's not entirely true anyway um so another thing i wanted to bring up was uh we talked about i wanted to see more uh of the other races that were hinted about particularly one called the fex um now the fex in a lot of the races are kind of like we only know about because david gator told them uh, told us about them well he's gone now um and he what i thought was interesting is that he had an interview come out when was this February 27th and um they were interviewing about him about interest like other things and uh he brought up and there's even pictures of which Jordan I how do I send this to you is there like a chat here it is um uh it's kind of a little bit down you just scroll uh he they they post his handmade map of the original working of Thetis and on this map, it has listed like where all the different tribes are. Some of them, most of them we know. Some of them I haven't heard of, like the Shilin. Uh, or no, the, uh, sorry, this didn't say tribe. It says race. Yeah. So um, mm-hmm. what I'm going to, I'm getting to, there's at least two races on here that we don't know what they are. Like it has like an Arlathan. It has the Elven race. We know what that is. Um, but somewhere in the middle of the free marches, there's something called the, if I'm reading this right, because it's like handwritten. Um, and kind of small, it's just like Sheelan race. Don't know what that is. Somewhere mm. in like the Hunterhorn Mountains, there's something called the Olivine race. Don't know what that is. The Fex are not on here, but where we think the Fex is is actually cut off at the top. So yeah, whatever. Um, but yeah, there's there's just a bunch of races that we don't know exist happen and may have just been cut. You know, they might not yeah. be around anymore. And I'm wondering if that's just what happened with the Fex. Because the only trace we have of the effects is an interview that gator did during dragon age 2 media circuit like that <laughs> right that's so off the wall that i'm that's so easy to erase you know so i i kind of have the feeling that those are just gone uh like we're not going to get any new races in dragon age and that we're like uh, we also talked about the scaled ones i feel like the scaled ones are probably just going to end up being like something with a canary that was a little bit funky um maybe like when you drink dragon's blood you gain some dragon abilities including growing scales and maybe it's just something like that um so i i feel like we're not gonna get new races because then there's gonna be pressure to make new races playable and like that's gonna be a headache so i feel like they're not gonna want to do that to themselves i agree with that i mean i think it's very easy for something that long ago to have just been forgotten although there's a slight possibility that like everything old becomes new again i know for some things in mass effect you know like uh, for andromeda i'm not saying they did a great job of it but Mm -hmm. some of that was were were things that like we wanted to do more of in one in mass effect one that we never got a chance to do some of the environmental um uh, hazards for instance and sometimes those things come back Mm -hmm. so that was all that we, I mean, we talked about a lot of what we wanted in Dragon Age 4, but now that we have moved on 
those are some of the past things. Uh, is there anything new that you want? Something that, you know, maybe we wouldn't have thought of back then. Like uh, now I'm saying, you know, shorter, shorter game. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that, that's an interesting one that maybe we wouldn't have said back then. Mm-hmm. Um, the thing that comes to the top of my list and I, I, I imagine, I think I'm willing to bet you and I probably may not agree on this, but the reason why I never would have thought of putting it on the list at that time is because I assumed that it was a given. Mm-hmm. And now I assume it's not a given, oh, okay. which is I want it to be a real time with pause game with ah. a tactical element. And now that's like, well, of course it's going to be that. Why would you put that on a wish list? Now I think it seems very evident that it's probably not going to be that. And I wish it was. The rumors I heard from, you know, Jeff Grubb and whatever are saying that it I believe it's not. So it's going to be interesting to see which way that leans towards. Yeah, real time action likely and and hey, I I love real time action games. I I'm a Mass Effect fan obviously and there's so many games like that that I love and besides I'm mainly here for the story anyway. Mm-hmm. But I I do actually awfully like those games like i like the gameplay of dragon age origins quite a bit i mm-hmm. like the, the gameplay of dragon age 2 even quite a bit even though tactically it kind of got dumbed down and inquisition also um uh quite a lot and so to see that go away as i've said multiple times from dragon age games is sort of sad to me but at the same time you know there's no saying that i won't really enjoy the action gameplay if that's what they're doing yeah i i I love the pausing feature and if it's gone, I'll be very sad. Um, But like, I I, I do feel like as the series went on, they didn't know how to handle it. especially Inquisition, like the only time I would really pause if it like, there was just so much going on in the battle and I just needed like a second to think. Um, And and I feel like um, Mass Effect andromeda i don't think you could pause but there was like a wheel menu where you were going to like order your companions around or am i thinking of mass effect 3 i can't remember no andromeda that's right they they lost the um it's not it's not the same basically you Mm -hmm. still have the wheel and you can sort of give loose commands like attack these ones but it's not at all um the way it was in the trilogy which i thought was a mistake yeah, but but they it still like slows down the battle, doesn't it? When you yeah, but it's there? only to switch your um your profile or whatever it is. Okay, I don't know. Yeah, I just I I like having that when when things get like really chaotic in a battle, just like that moment of just like hey, I'm gonna pause, take a breather, take a little think, little thinky think, and then we're gonna move on. Um. And if that's gone, I'm going to be very sad about it. Yeah. And they're trying they're trying to do the thing that's more popular. I mean, for me, I really love real time with pause and all that. But I mean, the the reality of the modern gaming landscape is I multiple of my friends, if they see something like that, they're like, how come it's not just quote unquote regular action? You know, and it's it's a barrier of entry to something. But I mean, I could go back and forth on it all day. I feel like Baldur's Gate 3 proved that it isn't and you can get mass appeal but um that's just not it's just not the direction dragon age is going and and i accept that ultimately but my my wish <laughs> is that that, it, that would come back somehow mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um do you have something top of your list that's a new addition that you want to see hmm i'm so- yeah, I feel like a lot of the things that I want are just a lot of things I've been saying for a long time. Like, I just want that Sovel enclosure. I've said that every other video, I think. Uh, so, and a lot of like story aspects that I want, like we we talked about in the, the first video, was uh, seeing the conclusion of the uh, why am I forgetting the group name? Because I want to see the formless one, which is part of the forbidden ones. There it is. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> because we, we've seen one of their group in every single game. There's four of them. So formless one will come in the next game. And like with the name like the four formless one, I think you can create a really fun boss battle with that. And I really hope they they seize that and just have some like weird, bizarre, off the wall boss battle. And I'd have a lot of fun. Um, I I guess I... As far as like features, though, I okay. This is maybe a random one. I would like to see being able to easily 
import and export faces. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, for sure. Because I get so annoyed when like I want to like reuse a face and I have to sit there with going through like 64 screenshots of every single slider. <laughs> you know mm-hmm. what I mean, and if it goes to be like, oh, I want to use face five. Bam, we're done. Um, especially since like I imagine no, I say I, I we say I imagine, but like Andromeda, which Andromeda did have that feature, despite a, a very lacking character creator overall. <laughs> now that I, I think about it. Uh, uh, they sure did, and uh, people got the most that we possibly could have out of that Andromeda character creator, limited as it was. Yeah, so if they had like that face share feature with a better character creator, that would be amazing. Um, if they do or not, I don't know, but I really hope, because that, w- that would be really cool. Um, especially if it was like, they're not going to support the mods in the way that I would like, but at least be like forgiving <laughs> if there are mods installed. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like they're not gonna like you know boo boo you, um. So yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna say that's one of my wants. You oh, know that. Sorry, photo mode. Oh heck yeah, for sure. Photo mode, photo mode would be good. What what were you gonna say though? Uh, so okay, so real quick, I'll just tag on to photo mode. Um, photo mode has become such a great part of gaming to me. I am mm-hmm. so disappointed. In pretty much any game that doesn't have it, but it is always. I guess always described as like not that easy to implement. So while mm. people think of it as a small thing, apparently it's a, it's an undertaking to do from a technical standpoint. Um, but I highly, highly agree that I fucking love photo mode in games. And I, I absolutely hope that that's in there for, for Dreadwolf. I wonder. Hmm. So just playing around with the Dragon Age Inquisition cam tools, I feel like a lot of the ability that that camera had also played around with the um, tactical pause that was implemented in the game. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if having a photo mode and not having, sorry, flip that. If having photo mode would make it easy to implement, implement like a pause feature in your combat. Or no, I guess I don't really, I guess it depends on how the photo, I don't know game dev, I'm guessing. <laughs> mm, I don't know. It's, I a don't good, know. it's a good question. I don't know. I, I've only played around with a very small amount of photo mode. So I, I would imagine too that it depends greatly on what the core of the combat system is comprised mm. of. And again, I, I'm no dev, so I'm halfway just trying to stumble my way through this. But to me, real time with pause is pseudo real time mm-hmm. like when i think back to kotor and things like that and Baldur's gate there are turns being executed mm-hmm. and it can play out in quote unquote real time but there are still turns whereas i would think that a true action game does not have behind the scenes turns mm-hmm. and maybe that's actually the thing that matters for like whether or not someone will eventually be able to mod in real time with pause or something like that yeah yeah but then again, who knows? What do I know? I'm not a game developer. <laughs> We're just some cl- chuckle fucks on the internet. <laughs> um, you made me think of something when you when your list was um, being able to bring in faces. Yes. I've said this before on other podcasts, but it's, it's still it's still a thing that I want. I really, really hope that they go the route that um, uh, of releasing the character creator before launch. Yes. Uh, Final Fantasy XIV recently did that. I guess they're having a uh, updated graphics update. And oh, that, that's been super fun to play around. Uh, there's anger about that. That doesn't even matter. But... Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, that would be really cool if they were able to release the game. But I, I can also see where that's just a whole, because you have to make a snapshot of the game. And then, like, at least even in the Final Fantasy thing, people have been able to data mine a couple things out of it. So I imagine, like, if you do not want anything to leak, that could be kind of potentially dangerous to, <laughs> to leak out. So yeah. I can see why they wouldn't do that. Um, but I that would be a lot of fun if they did. Um, Saints Row did it, and mm-hmm. Dragon's, Dragon's Dogma 2 most recently yeah. did it. I just think it's such great publicity for your game. Mm. Even if people just do dopey things like we made Obama in the character. <laughs> creator. Great, great. It'll go viral. Great. Like it's publicity. And for the quote unquote serious participants in that, I don't, I spend hours in character creator. So if it's the type of thing where you can save it and like, Hey, when the full game comes out, you're ready. 
that way I can just jump into playing it instead of spending literally an hour. Like I'm not even exaggerating when I say that an hour, if not 90 minutes, if not two hours creating a character, that's how insane I am. Yeah. No, I, I mean, I'm, I'm there. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> Uh, so that would be an oh please 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 because it's a Bioware game the character creator and like just give us some like dopey like pretend cutscene it doesn't even have to be the re- just so we can see like lighting angles and like so we don't mm. spend three hours in there and then go oh fuck they still look messed up in the real cutscenes yeah yeah I get that like yeah button just like let them like move around or something so you can kind of see yeah 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 for sure mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, I mean, and like, I think also with this, just on the character creator, there's like every other list of, yeah, we want the better hair. We want some cool new features, maybe a height slider. I don't know. Um, There's all of that. Maybe, maybe we can get spicy and say you can make a half race. You want to make a half elf. Well, half race is just human, but we don't know what a half dwarf looks like or a half canary. Maybe we can do that. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I mean, yeah, there's there's definitely an appetite for that. I mean, mm-hmm. people will love that. They'll play it for sure. So there's there's that. I'm trying to think of like, what are some other things I can think of that haven't been done to death? But I, I feel like that's kind of it, though. I feel like that's my list. I, it- I don't I don't think that this won't be in there because they've already kind of done it. But like I liked building up um, like a base. Like I, I like mm-hmm. I like that element to it. Mm-hmm. Um, if it's a little more than Skyhold, that's fine. Like that was in there, but I, I would like to see that be at least at the level that it was in Inquisition, if mm-hmm. not more, because I think there's an appetite for stuff like that. And it doesn't have to be like Fallout type of base building, but at least like here's the module that unlocks if you do X, Y, or have this much gold to pay for it or what have you, and then have that translate to some bonuses for the party or for your character i love stuff like that and especially if there's choices then Mm -hmm. your your base will look different than mine and stuff like that all right i like this line of thinking okay uh you get to build a base anywhere in thetis where are you building oh wait so like so you're asking me that question where would i build it anywhere in thetis yeah like if you get to choose in, in the game um, either like you're making the game, I don't know, or or like maybe even the game lets you choose a couple options. What what what? Where are you going? Crap, that's such a good question. You answer first. I need to think about this. I mean, like for channel branding purposes, like the Vir Durthara, I do love the behind the mirror weirdness. Um, if we're doing more realistic. Um, <sighs> I mean, Elven Ruins are fun. That's kind of the same answer, let's be honest, though. Uh, I like snowy areas, but that mm-hmm. was Skyhold, wasn't it? Huh. It kind of was a bit, yeah. It was Skyhold, yeah. So I don't want to do that then. We're going in the Tevinter area. Yeah, I, I, I maybe. Hmm. Oh, okay. Uh, it, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was going to say, uh, I, I was thinking, okay, in, in, in Trespasser, you can um, go to, like, the ruins of, like, uh, some Anderfell ancient thing, and it's a really cool little ruin. It was very mysterious, but, like, I don't know. I'm just not feeling it right now, I guess, because I, I just like the elven stuff so much. So I guess it's just... Uh, it's Elven Ruin because I don't want to be in the deep. I don't want to be in the deep roads. We we're already in the mountains. Um, I don't want to be in the desert. I maybe a forest would be fun. Maybe mm-hmm. like a Dalish camp, but that was that was basically Origins. You're in a camp, kind of. Yeah. Uh, we were in a house in in Dragon Age, so like weird Elven Ruins, maybe wins, or maybe like a really nice apartment in Antiva. That would be pretty, like because they they've they've shown like those uh, really nice. Yeah, okay, I, I'm I'm selling myself on the TV. A really nice like apartment, apartment that looks out into like the city at night, and like you you get oh, there. Oh, that's really good. Yeah, okay, I'm going that one. That's that's that fun. that's solid. If I can it be magic or does it have? Hell yeah, <laughs> magic. I, Go for it. Un, can I make it underwater, like somewhere in yeah! Orlay, like off the coast of Alroyo, like, under the ocean though? Like, Absolutely. That'd be pretty dope. 
because they they did have some concept of like people swimming underwater. So like, hey, maybe. I, I think either underwater base or if not as magical, just like some really tiny unnamed island off the coast of El Rio. Oh, we get our own islands. That would be that would be kind of amazing, actually. Also, I do have El Rio. I mean, it's 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 a, not on the ocean; it's a sea. So maybe, but you can say yeah, off. Sea. Okay, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll take it. It's just uh, somewhere with water. It could be a lake for all I care, as long okay, as it's got yeah. some water. But yeah, like your own your own island would be pretty cool. I agree. If they ever did something, now again, I'm not suggesting this as a wish list for Dragon Age Dreadwolf, but let's mm-hmm. say that for some reason EA, you know, they make The Sims, whatever, right? Like, yeah, they just got crazy and they're like, we want to do Dragon Age themed. The Sims? Basically an Animal Crossing oh. knockoff. How crazy do you go on that game? <laughs> oh, God. I would sell my soul. <laughs> no, like a Dragon Age, like a weird... I, I think I've said this before when we were talking about Dragon Age tactics. If we had like some Dragon Age game that somehow married like the tactics, with a little bit of that like XCOM. I, I had played XCOM once like 10 years ago um, where you can like build a little bit of a base. Uh, with like some Animal Crossing elements where you get to like decorate the base. Mm-hmm. Mm, yum, yum, yum. Eat it up. Would love it. And then you get to make all your little character. Oh, ooh, I'd love it. <clears throat> uh, th- they'll I mean, probably never Microsoft, happen. Microsoft has done, I don't remember the name of the game. Someone out there will remember it. But there is a very Animal Crossing ripoff type of game that I think it maybe it's exclusive to Xbox and it's on Game ah. Pass. Like, it's out there. I mean, Animal Crossing was such a huge hit. I wouldn't. It wouldn't entirely surprise me that just from a business standpoint, that more people want to do copycat products. That probably not with Dragon Age, but well, yeah, there's know. there's definitely copycat. Like basically, most cop- cozy games, quote unquote, are some amalgamation of Animal Crossing and Stardew Valley. Correct. You know, so I I'm not surprised. Um, then th- and there's some good ones out there, uh, and then there's some. Not great ones, <laughs> but, mm-hmm. um, you know, uh, but yeah. Oh, I've got another one for a wish list. Do tell. Closure. Damn. Actually, <laughs> the, the, actually, though, that's the real answer. That's the real answer. It, closure. I, I, and, and I don't mean, this is such a weird thing to say. It's like, I don't want even Mass Effect to be quote unquote over, like as a brand, as a franchise. I don't want Dragon Age to be over as a brand or a franchise. Mm-hmm. But one of the main reasons why as much of a kerfuffle as you want to say about Andromeda, it would have been worse if somehow the trilogy was more tied to it or Mm -hmm. the trilogy ended, you know, Mass Effect 3 was the end. And so whatever happens with Andromeda, hey, it wasn't the greatest game ever. Some of us loved it, but we have our trilogy because of the nature of the story of Dragon Age, even though they did three games, that's not a trilogy. It it wasn't over. It wasn't complete. It was anything but that Inquisition basically ended on a cliffhanger. Mm -hmm. Whatever happens after Dragon Age Dreadwolf, I'm sure none of us know. Um, Maybe it is the end, the end. I hope it's not. But I want it to be a complete ending to this story. I want there to be closure so that if the worst happens and we never get another Dragon Age game, which I really hope doesn't happen... Mm -hmm. At least the story is over and it's done. More than anything, I want it to have a good ending and a sense of closure. I completely agree with that. I think that is an incredibly important thing that I don't know if they would be thinking about that. But at at the very least, like, if you keep continuing on the story in a meaningful way, rather than like kind of bookending what we currently are obsessed about and then reopening something later down, like kind of Andromeda did you're going to have a really hard time with onboarding new fans. If they have to play a game from 2009, that's extremely hard to get to unless you're on PC. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> so, um, and like, you know, maybe they just bring it, maybe they update origins and like, then it's, it's not that big of a deal, but still saying like, Oh, you want to enjoy dragon age five. You got four games to play through bucko. Like that's a big barrier of entry. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I can see like them wanting to just, okay, like we are, we are kind of completing the storyline. And if we continue Dragon Age, it kind of sets up something else. And I can totally see like if there is a cliffhanger or something at the end of Dragon Age 4, it's going to be something like, oh, um, 
thank God I'm completely just stealing this from Final Fantasy, to be honest. Oh, there's this adventure across the sea in a land you've never been in that you've only barely heard of. Let's go. And like, oh, sure. that's yeah. that's it. There's this promise of new adventure just somewhere else. And that's it. And then you can in like there, there's really not much cliffhanger there. It's just new thing. Yeah, I can get behind that, right? This story's over, but the world still has many of Dragon Age of Thetis still has many stories to tell. I'm totally yes. in favor of that because like I said, I I don't want to make it seem like this is going to be the last Dragon Age game. No, not at all. I hope there are many, many more Dragon Age games. Oh yeah. I, I still hope one fucking day we get Dragon Age tactics. I hope we get oh. all of it over the course of, you know, whatever, the many mm-hmm. years ahead. But this story needs to be done uh it needs to be closed and i think um that's probably at the top of everyone's list Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well now i just want dragon age (laughs) dragon age summer is about to start kids um oh god i want it dad summer dad summer daddy summer uh well yeah i guess uh unless there's there's something to add that's all i can say for uh what I want for Dragon Age 4. Because I feel like at this point, I'm just so open. <laughs> just let it be real and I'm down. Yeah, the most thing we want is a release date. We want it to be here. And it's feel it's going to feel surreal. We've said this many times when it's finally here. Mm-hmm. But it does it does kind of seem like it's going to be an interesting summer. I'll say that. So yes. um, it, it's, it's closer now than it's ever been, which is actually true every second. But... <laughs> <laughs> But now, statement. yeah, but now there's like actually substantial rumor. Like, I feel like in the past, the most substantial rumor we have is they're working on it and then we would guess right. the date. Now it's like they're basically done. And when is it released? And that's a, just a huge pivot. Um, so if if you're doubting it's going to come out this year, like the, the conversations around it have changed in the upper echelons of like gaming rumor communities. Yeah. And if you're not paying attention to that, I totally get that it's sounds like it's fake and what happened but like things have changed and i think it is going to come out this year yeah um, totally. so yeah yeah uh, yeah and that's that's our that's our thing uh how do we end the show <laughs> buckle up kids it's going to be an interesting year uh katie well, where can the folks find you right uh well uh i'm taking a bit of a break but technically on youtube um and then i'll be back I let my last video had a cliffhanger on it. Uh, Don't expect much, but I'll be back looking a little bit different and uh, hopefully before the summer. So I can have all of that roll out before any Dragon Age stuff does. (laughs) If you did a cliffhanger and you're going to be back sooner than nine and a half years, I think the Dragon Age community of all communities will, will be okay with that. You know, that's true. I can do better than that. I think I think I can do better than nine years. <laughs> I hope. Uh, but where where can they find you, Jordan? On this podcast and nowhere else. I've retired from the internet. <laughs> uh, that was another thing. We're watching. I'm, I'm not, not where I was listening to the podcast, and you were talking about when you made videos. I'm sitting there thinking, like, man, I remember when Jordan made videos? Yeah, I know it was fun. Who knows? Who Maybe knows? that time will return. But as of now, I'm retired from the internet, <laughs> except for this podcast. I get that. The place kind of sucks right now. Everyone's just really angry. And <laughs> it's a little with, weird. With it being an election year, it's going to be fucking insufferable in a couple months. So I Oh, my God. I, I have, because I am retired from the internet, I sometimes forget that this is an election year. And that's a glorious, glorious um, luxury to have. I'm going to try and hold on to it as long as I can. It is weirdly quiet about the election right now. Like, I feel like the 2016 and 2020 election were a lot louder already. But, like... It's coming. I could feel it in the waters. There's been a couple of ads given to me on Twitter that's like, why are you giving this? People in town, because I live in the South now, are flying their little Trump flags, even though I don't think he has a nomination yet. It's like, I see it. It's coming. I'm just trying to live my best life out here, have my dad summer. I'm not thinking about no elections. <laughs> yeah, I want the dad summer too. I'm not paying attention. Anyway, uh, with that, uh, Doresh Sharon. Bye.